Robert Haley stars as Charlie McMahon in By the Book. Pretty swanky. Ah, these places give me hives. Charlie... They burn the best steak in the city. Yeah, and a slab of sirloin costs as much as the national debt of Botswana. Enjoy, Charlie. It's not every day your old partner makes deputy chief, and the new chief ain't gonna last. Cheers. Cheers. What do you mean he isn't gonna last? DeMarco is a menace. And Pompous? You, sir, have done this great city a great service, and together we will heal the festering sore of disloyalty that has so corrupted this service. (laughs) Festering sore? We're diseased. He blames the union. The union? When police officers second-guess the chain of command, anarchy hovers in dark shadows, a snarling grin upon its slavering lips. He didn't say that. Words to that effect. He has decreed that the union must be brought to heel. Oh, that means going mano a mano with Cliff Stark. He relishes the engagement. And if an officer so much as wears non-regulation socks, I've been ordered to nail him or her to the wall. He's going to treat the service like an army boot camp? That's right. Break their spirit, then build everyone up again in his own image. And he expects me to play drill sergeant? Please. He wants a complete statistical analysis of time usage and charge to conviction ratios for the whole section. Paperwork has tripled to 15, too. And regulations? He called for a full dress inspection at HQ, and I got chewed out for not being able to produce my gloves. I work in computer crime, for God's sake. I don't need my mittens. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Charlie. We had to order. Got to be back at our desks by 1.45. Oh, the general crack in the whip? A cat o' nine tails with knots. The guy's an idiot. Hey, he was the point guy in the Somali inquiry and has 20 years under his belt with the judge advocate general. It's great PR, but T.O. ain't CFB Petawawa. Cliff is having a bird. Hey, having a bird over a turkey. <laughs> Thanks for the lift, Charlie. I can't believe you're not allowed to take the van to lunch. Not company business, is it? Hey, over here! Mary, what's happening? The side exit, hurry! What? It's really bad. Hurry! Stand back, I'm going with them. You've done all you can, Mary. Somebody has to be with them. It's too late. (gasps) Jolene, take her. Uh... Hi, I'm Charlie McMahon. Corey Morris. What happened, Corey? We were both working on these damn reports. He went out back to get some paper. I heard a pop, ran back there, and... I was in the coffee room, and Corey yelled. We all went back, and he shot himself. Hang on, Mary, hang on. He didn't need to. It wasn't worth his life. Chief pounded Pete into his grave, and you helped him do it. For God's sake, Morris, cops commit suicide almost as often as as dentists. Exactly. The job's a killer without the pressure DeMarco's been putting on everybody. So you're going after DeMarco? Damn right we are. The workload's too big. According to the collective agreement... What the hell with that? DeMarco's trying to teach us a lesson. Well, I'm going to teach him what it feels like to be crucified in the Toronto Star. At least talk to him before you drag the service back into the gutter. So... Now it's my fault. Boys, boys, can we take the temperature down a few degrees? The whole bar's watching. Good thing. They all know what needs to happen. Yeah, and what's that? No more BS reports. Right, boys? Enough is enough. Don't push me, kid. I'll push back. That's so. Corey, let me handle this. Fine, but I'm not writing any more useless reports. And there's an election coming up. Well, are we happy now? I'm sorry, but this is my division, and I can't put up with that kind of guff. Listen, Cliff, I can deal with DeMarco, but it's going to take time. Cut me some slack, okay? Look around this bar, Kirk. These guys are mad as hell, and I've got to do something about it. You've been playing into DeMarco's hand. You know he's after the union. Anyway, everybody's assuming that Pete's decision was caused by job pressure. For all we know, it's something personal, or maybe something worse. What's that supposed to mean? I keep thinking about Chief Bartlett. You're saying Pete went bad and killed himself? 
because it was going to come out. Back at the station, Mary said he didn't need to. It wasn't worth his life. Oh, damn it all. He was dirty. I don't know. I just think we need to check it out before you both hang yourselves out to dry. Dad says I've got to eat. Ugh, it's hard, eh? Everything tastes like... like ashes. How's your father doing, anyway? Dad? Oh, you know, good days, bad days. Oh, life is just so... Sorry. I'm pretty messed up. Pete and I were in the same cruiser for five years. Was there anything he said that made you think Nothing. That... He was a good officer doing a good job. How was he doing at home? Oh, he was a cop. It's not easy, but he loved his family. It's okay. The new chief's program, I, I guess it's taken a toll. Knowing somebody was second-guessing your every move, it wasn't pleasant, but Pete was used to pressure. The day he died, you said... He didn't need to. It wasn't worth his life. I don't know what I said. My partner just killed himself, for God's sake. What's this all about? Oh, they're grilling me about Pete. Oh, we're not grilling you, Mary. We're trying to help. You can help by leaving her alone. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to cause I got any... your number, McMahon. You're a frustrated old guy who blew your own career. So now you get your jollies bringing other officers down. That's not fair. No? Doug Gardner, Barry Doyle, Gordy Newman, Chief... Bartlett? Those guys were all in trouble, one way or the other. Yeah, and how about Cliff Stark? Word is you tried to pin a murder on him. Charlie saved Cliff's job. Oh, well, thanks from every cop on the force. I was doing what I thought was right. You're not going to destroy Pete Miller's rep, you hear me? Come on, Mary. I'll drive you home. I'm sorry, Mary. I'll call. I told you, leave her alone. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I wish I really believed that. Well, just so long as he doesn't get suicidal. I'm serious, Malcolm. I've never seen Charlie that low. It was like he got kicked in the head. So what's the issue here? We should protect all cops, no matter what they do? Because they're cops? That is the issue. Nobody wants to admit it. Admit what? That the guy your life depends on can't be trusted. You don't want to hope the guy isn't corrupt. You want to know it, unless you're corrupt yourself. You think Pete Miller was corrupt? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And to tell the truth, I hate it. You got anything? I ran his arrest records through the system looking for any significant statistical variance. Nothing. Very encouraging. But then something else caught my eye. What's that? Accident reports. Pete Miller was writing an awful lot of accident reports. Twice the divisional average. You need an accident report to file an insurance claim. Okay, Josie, I gotta go. Thanks for the help. It's kind of fun to be working the street, even if I have to jam it into my lunch break. Hey, you can get a really good roadie over there. Later. So what'd you find out? Everybody loves Pete. Except for crack dealers and ladies of the morning. Ladies of the morning? They work the day shift. Pete used to park on the corner there, scaring off the Johns. That girl I was talking to, she says Pete and a tow truck guy she serviced were in business together. What kind of business? Well, let's put it this way. The guy's brother owned a body shop. Look, Corey, I'm as cheesed as anyone. But a wildcat strike isn't going to help. I am not going to let them get away with it. But I'm not going off half-cocked, either. i got plans. When they're solid, you'll be the first to know. <sighs> that guy hasn't been to a union meeting in six years, and suddenly he's the ghost of Joe Hill. Who was it? The constable who found Pete Miller. Corey Morris? Mm. Yesterday he tore a strip off Charlie. Yeah, I just heard the replay. Why didn't you set him straight? He's not worth the trouble. What's happening? Well, Pete was writing up fake insurance reports. Malcolm's got a long list of claims all tied to the same body shop and confirmation on the street. I hate this. Mary Harris in on it? Even if she wasn't. She had to be aware something was going on. I used to know her dad, Walter. We all do. He was a good cop. 
I'd just like to let the whole thing slide. Pete's got a wife and kids. Mary has her own problems. And it's all so penny ante. Oh, can't do that. Look at the paper. Last Friday afternoon, an exhausted and demoralized police constable walked into a storage room at Station 15. Did Corey make this happen? I don't know, but they sure as hell go to town on DeMarco. Call him a tin pot martinet. It also predicts we'll walk out by the weekend. And we will, too, if that keeps up. And when it comes out, Pete was dirty? The chief will win. His methods are exposing corruption in the service. <laughs> it's a lose-lose situation. Yeah. Well, what's Charlie think? I don't know. He's not answering his phone. Perfect. Nice bird. It's a... Uh... Cockatoo. Dad gave him to me. Did you teach it how to talk? Nah, she picks things up. You know, people can't help themselves. Pretty bird, pretty bird. <laughs> so how's your dad? He's not getting any better, but he's fine. Good. <laughs> well, give him my best. Right. So, what's this about, Charlie? It's about the other day. I owe you an apology. It's okay. I know you didn't mean to. No, but I did. It's the way my mind works now. Everywhere I look, I see shadows. And Corey's right. I mean, I'm not on the job anymore. I shouldn't get messed up in this stuff. But I never set out to get anybody. It's just... All I ever want to do is get to the truth. Yeah, you shouldn't pay too much attention to Corey. He's got a hell of a temper. Him and Pete must have been pretty tight. Pete and Corey? <laughs> not really. Oh, so it's more like he's protecting you than Pete. What do you mean? If Pete was in trouble, it's going to come out. And people are going to start looking at his partner, right? And there I am, shooting my mouth off in the coffee room. Pete wasn't doing anything wrong. Even if he was, I didn't know about it. And as for Corey protecting me, I don't know him all that well. No, no, sorry. I, I just thought... Maybe his behavior has more to do with finding a fellow officer like that, you know? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm just... I don't know, ever since Chief Bartlett, I... Look, never mind. I'm just glad there's nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Because he was dirty. Second-rate insurance scams. But you know all about that, right? What are you saying? I don't want to see you get hurt. If you were to volunteer the information, you know, before it goes any further... So, so you want me to rat out my dead partner? Is that what you're saying? Look, I'm trying to help you. But you've got to give him up, because eventually they'll come after you. What happened to you? You used to be a cop. Now, you're everything that Corey says. Right. This better be good. You just let me know when it's not, and I'll tell them to stop. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not much in here. Start from the bottom and work up. And sneakers. Anything inside? Sports socks. Uniform, great coat on the back hook, scarf on the left hook, right hook empty. Check the pockets. Will do. Top rack, empty. You check the ridge at the back? The ridge at the back? Come on. Top of the rack at the back. There's a ridge. I used to keep my report book up there. Pete's report book was in his breast pocket. Some guys keep two. Sometimes it's good to have some place private to keep your personal thoughts. Nothing personal or private in his coat. One pair of regulation gloves, all other pockets empty. Great. What you got? A pad. Quite a chore to take care of, that's for sure. Pity, pity, pity. So listen, Walt. Um, I have to talk to you about Mary. She, she's my little girl. It's just that her partner, Pete Miller. You know Pete Miller? Broke him in. Rookie, rookie, rookie. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of evidence that he was involved in an insurance scam. Which one? Fake accident reports. Oh, good one. Let me run it down. you got to have a single car incident. Theft, hit and run. I swerved to avoid a drunk driver. Hit a... Uh, hit a... You know, with the leaves. Tree. Tree. Drunk driver takes off. That kind of thing. Yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, you need an officer 
writing reports for crimes that didn't happen. A partner in a body shop helps. A partner in a chop shop is better. A chop shop? Come on, come on, young man. Have I taught you nothing? A chop shop. Tell me. Come on, Walter. I know the scam. Then how about you explain it to me, smart guy? A chop shop is a garage where stolen cars are taken apart to sell for parts. Or? Or altered enough so that you can sell it. See, you know what a chop shop is. <laughs> how much is Pete making on this scam? He only charged 30 or 40 bucks a report. That all? The claims were small. Cars in need of a little body work, mostly. Chump change. You're going to run this insurance scam right, you're going to have to have a chop shop online. And to make it really worth doing, you need something like a, a Mercedes LS 328 or a, 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 a Porsche, or one of those $100,000 cars, you know? No, but I can imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's... Who, who sang that, Charlie? Some kid I used to work with. How's it go? I don't sing, well. Oh, it's too bad. Uh, it's a blessing, really. Uh, you say so. Anyway, the scam starts with stealing the car, right? You're a stockbroker. Needless to say, you're desperate for money. <laughs> so you drive your car down to Nashville. Sell it for a good price to a chop shop. Come home, then report your car stolen to Pete. He doesn't investigate. He just writes it up. No questions asked. And you take the insurance. You pay what you owe on the car, buy some basic transportation, and walk away with a huge wad of cash in your pocket. <laughs> Say, what, what's your name again? Charlie. Charlie McMahon. We worked together at Station 52. I was just starting out. The kid with the pocket watch. You're the kid with the pocket watch. Yeah, like I told you. So what do you think? Oh, I prefer a wristwatch. I drop my pants on the floor and then step on a pocket watch. No, I meant about Pete. Sounds like a fool. I know him, don't I? Yeah, the only thing is, he's dead. And your Mary is his partner. Oh, no. No way. She's a good girl. Takes good care of us, doesn't she, Juju? Pretty, pretty... No, 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 no way. Walter? Walt? We can't cover it up. She said she'd take care of me forever. Couldn't do it on her own, though. Hired me a housekeeper. Emmy. You meet Emmy? Yeah. She let me in. Good woman, Emmy. Registered nurse. Takes care of me. You've got to think she's dirty. I mean, she must have known what Pete was doing. And she's got a live-in caretaker for her dad. That's got to cost. Yeah, but Pete's kept a pretty clear account of what he was up to in his notepad, and there's no mention of her taking a cut. Besides, the amount Pete was grifting, even if he gave it all to her, it wouldn't cover the cost of the caretaker. I don't know, but I know for certain she's lying. About Pete? Probably, but she's definitely lying about her relationship with Corey. For sure she has a relationship with Corey. But won't admit it? Oh, for God's sake, it was pathetic. There she is, pretending she hardly knows him, and her parrot's... Talk it to. Whatever. Her parrot's going, Corey, Corey, Corey. No, I just said it sounded like that, a bit. You think she's lying on account of a bird? No, I think she's lying because she's a terrible liar. The other thing was just an observation. It's an excellent clue, and I'm keeping it. And here are Corey Morris's accident reports. If he was helping her out and she told him about Pete's scam... Uh, oh. What? His accident reports. Below average. Try something else. What? Grand Theft Auto. I practically forgot you can play it that way, too. Play it? Fake the theft. Cash the insurance. Oh, joy. Oh, bliss. How many cops you know? have handled cases involving a Porsche, two Mercedes, and a Hummer in the last three months. Jolene? Can I come in? Sure. So, 
We know about the cars. What cars? Oh, come on, Mary. We've known each other for too long. What are you going to do about it? We thought maybe we could protect you if it's just Pete making a few bucks on the side. At least get you off with a reprimand, but this... You don't know, Jolene, what it's like watching a man you love just going away day by day. And there's nothing you can do but watch it happen and try, try to make him as comfortable as you can. But you can't. They know, Jolene. Not all the time, but they know. Alzheimer is hard, I know. After a while, you can't explain anything to them anymore. You just can't say the words one more time, so you ignore it. And Dad? <laughs> oh, boy, Dad hates to be ignored. You just get so tired and just... <sighs> time. <laughs> well, there's no time. There's no time for him. Day, night. Just an endless, agonizing now. But nobody can give him what he wants. He was so sharp and funny, and that was only a couple of years ago. Sometimes it comes on fast. Sometimes slow, but in the end... Look, I couldn't take care of him, okay? I needed the help, and I couldn't afford it. I didn't know what to do, and then Corey came along. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jolene. I'm just, I'm so sorry. We had to hide our relationship in any case, or one of us would have had to take a transfer. So you just kept it quiet? Pete knew, of course. Right. It's hard to fool your partner when you're in love. Where's Morris? The lockup. You been charged yet? He's a good man. Not yet. But he knows it's coming. Yeah, except for $400,000 in insurance fraud. So he's lawyered up? He did it for me. For my dad. Yep. Where'd he get the idea? From me. I told him what Pete was doing. He just improved on it. Once the jury hears this story, Walter... Pete's tragedy and the rest. They're still going to do some time. Yeah, maybe some. Probably nobody would have been the wiser either, if it weren't for Chief DeMarco. Once we had to start breaking out our cases into categories... What's going to happen to Walt? Pete said he was bound to get caught. Someplace awful. Did you catch that? So Pete didn't know what you and Corey were into? No. Corey thought we could dodge the bullet, make a few clerical errors, hide some of the statistics inside other statistics... He was pretty confident. Until Pete told me he was going to confess. What? I see. Uh, uh, just let me review my notes. You got something? Maybe. Hi. Malcolm, I need you to get on to forensics. Get them to review the report on Pete's death. The report I read said there were powder burns on Pete's gloves. Find out if they did a check on his coat sleeves. Okay, thanks. Coat sleeves? How many pairs of regular issue gloves do you have, Jolene? One? Why? Okay, so Pete didn't know what you were doing, and he told you he was going to turn himself in. Did you tell Corey? That's right. Did you tell Corey what Pete was going to do? Okay, well, I guess that will be enough for now. Kirk. Hi, Corey. Cliff. Charlie wanted to see you. I set it up. I'm not talking to anybody. Well, that's cool. I just want you to listen. What are you doing here, anyway? Oh, you know, I'm like the Lone Ranger or something, right? What do you want? First off, I want to tell you I appreciate what you were trying to do for Waller and Mary. I went over there to see him a few days back. Breaks your heart. Yeah. She could never have made it without you. We're talking about something and I'm not going to talk about. Well, I don't want to talk about it either. Because I don't want to have anything to do with your trial. Me neither. Watching DeMarco gloating... Knowing what's going to happen to Walter. Watching Cliff get kicked in the head and the union getting screwed. I hate it. But we're in a fortunate position. What position is that? He's in a position to help you. What? I gotta go. What he's gonna say, I can't hear. I'll be outside if you need me. Listen to him, Corey. So? What you said to me in the bar the other night, it got under my skin. I kept thinking about it. I started to believe you were right. Why was I always bringing down cops? Sure, the guys that got busted were in trouble, but all of them did the job. And that isn't easy. Go on. And now I've done it again. Mary is in there spilling her guts, and I get the honor of standing behind the mirror watching her life going down the drain. I hate it. 
What she's saying. Enough. Too much. The worst is she told him about Pete wanting to turn himself in. And that you thought you could have made it through if he just kept his mouth shut. Is this the part where I say, I would have too, and you can testify I confessed? They went back and re-examined Pete's uniform. There's powder residue on the glove. That was enough when they thought it was a suicide, but now there's a possibility it's a murder. What? There's no powder residue on the sleeve of his jacket. How's that possible, Corey? I mean, the glove stinks of cordite and the sleeve is clean. You put it together. I don't understand. It's simple. Whoever shot him was wearing regulation service gloves. Put the gun up to Pete's head, popped him, peeled off the glove, put it on his hand, then called out for help. That's crazy. No, not if everybody thinks it's suicide. Why suspect the officer that found him? I mean, what's his motive? But now they got a motive, Corey. Pete's gloves were in his great coat pocket, and they're getting a warrant to examine your uniform. What? No, no way. I can't help you, Corey. Don't even want to try. Before they get to your uniform, try and cut a deal. You have been listening to Buy the Book. This week's episode of our series, The Old Guy by Paul Ledoux. Featured in the cast tonight, Robert Haley as Charlie McMahon, William Colgate as Kirk, Ryan Rogerson as Malcolm Fieldstein, Karen Glaive as Jolene Gray. With them, you also heard Hardy T. Lynham as Cliff Stark, Genevieve Steele as Mary Harris, Greg Spottiswood as Corey Morris, and Frank Perry as Walter Harris. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Kimlicka. The recording engineer was Wayne Richards. The sound effects were by Matt Wilcott. Colleen Woods was the associate producer. Our coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. The program was produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. I'm Bob Bolting, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments. See you next week.